All right, so here's page two. We got the title up here. It says interior angle sum of polygons. Uh, we're going to do a little investigation here. What you're going to need is you're going to need a, you're going to need a straight edge uh, because I'm going to be drawing some line segments on these polygons. And if you don't do a straight edge, um, I'll know. I'll I'll I can sense it through the force or something. I'll sense whether or not you're using um, a straight edge. Let's let's just first go here though and and name some of these things. Obviously. Uh, I'm going to just rip through these names real quick. This guy, we know, triangle. Four sides. Quadrilateral. Five sides pentagon. Six sides hexagon. Seven sides uh, commonly referred to as a heptagon or sometimes a septagon. Starting to sound a little bit like transformers, though, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, eight sides, that's our friend the octagon. Nine sides, not very clever. This one's a nonagon. Can't spell. Ten sides, decagon. What about n equals 11? Not even listed here. And then we jump up to n equals 12. Dodecagon. And uh, I guess it makes sense to talk about n. We use the letter n to designate the number of sides in a uh, polygon. There is an 11-sided one, it's just not included here. Uh, you'll see that at the bottom of the page there's a table. Uh, so we've got the top row there, the number of sides in the polygon, and what we're going to do is figure out what the sum of the interior angles of the polygon is. Now it's pretty easy for a triangle. We know that that one is 180. We've been using that number for a long time. Uh, but let's go up here and look at the quadrilateral. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to split this thing into triangles, kind of like I did on the previous example. And what I've got there, when I run that segment there, I've split it into two triangles. Uh, so let's go down and look at our table now for a quadrilateral of four sides. I can split that into two triangles, and I do 2 times 180 and that's 360 degrees. So I'm going to add a I'm going to add a row here. Triangle, it's obviously one triangle. Uh, the quadrilateral I was able to split into two. I've already done the pentagon. We could split that into three. That gave us 540 degrees. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do this uh, for the rest of these um, for the rest of these polygons, and I'm going to go through this very quickly. Okay, so that's, uh, we've, we've gone all the way up to an eight-sided uh, polygon or the octagon, and ju let's just take note of a couple things here. Um, each time n goes up by one, we're adding one triangle when we do the split. Uh, and that means because we're adding one triangle, we add 180 degrees each time the number of sides in the polygon increases by one. Let's go ahead and look at 9, uh, 10, and 12 real quick. All right, folks, there you have it. There's a table of the uh, interior angles of polygons for different uh, number of sides. We've got 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 12. Uh, again, notice that pattern. Uh, the number of triangles that can be made out of that polygon is always two less than the number of sides. So, for example, let's take a look here at the octagon. The octagon, eight sides, can make six triangles, that's two minus eight. Uh, if you do six times 180, you get 1080. 
so that's one pattern I notice. I also notice that each time the number of sides goes up by one, the number, the uh, sum of the angles goes up by 180. You'll notice that pattern does not hold here. This is an increase of 360 degrees, but that's because the number of sides went up by two. We increased the number of sides by two, so the number of triangles also increased by two. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and shut this page down and uh, go back to page one.